Hello friends, today's review is Ghost Smith by Nikki Pau Prado. It is book two of the House of Bone duology. The link for book one, my book review for book one, The Bone Smith, will be in the description box below. You can see the cover there, it's the same girl, Rand, all dressed up, and you can see the iron revenants behind her. Oh, I will read the description for you. Ren is still reeling from the revelation that the mother she thought was dead is actually the corpse queen, a ghost smith with the terrifying power to control the undead. It was Ren's own mother who created the Iron Revenants, an army of near unbeatable undead soldiers. When the Iron Revenants attack, no one in the Dominions will have the strength to stand in their way. Now Ren, Leo, and Julian find themselves once more in the breach, this time on the run from Ren's father, who is determined to secure more power for himself and the House of Bone. The three are desperate to stop the upcoming war, but with Julian still furious about Ren double-crossing him, working together is easier said than done. And to make matters worse, Ren is plagued by powerful new allies, powerful new abilities, that force her to reassess everything she knows about being a bonesmith. When Ren's long-lost twin brother shows up and vows to help her destroy the well of magic that feeds the Iron Revenants, she must decide if trusting him is, a, is, a, is worth potentially playing right into her mother's hands. After all, the dead might be dangerous, but it's the living who can betray you. So obviously the main characters are Ren, Julian, and Leo. Uh, her brother's name is Hawk. We have uh, her cousin Inera, who helps her out a lot, and her dad Vance. Her mother is, her name is Ravenna, Ravina, Ravina, Ravina. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but like all of the bone, the ghost smith's names are like a bird. So like Ren, Hawk, Raven. So I want to say Ravina. Um, then there's also Starling, who was uh, Hawk's wet nurse. She plays a very minor role. Uh, Ren's uncle, Locke. And then the commander, Commander Duncan of the, the wall. I can't remember what it's called, the barrier or breach wall. And Mercy is a bonesmith that they find inside on the other side of the wall, on the breach side of the wall, that has been living on her own, trying to do her best to help the dead. So she sort of becomes a little ally in the end. Um, definitely, it's um, it's written inside the book. It says 14 plus. Uh, there's no real spice in this one. It's a fade to black. Uh, fade to black scene I should say this one you can see the characters really develop even more because you learn more about the ghost smith abilities and some things about the bone smith abilities that affect Hawk because Hawk was raised as a ghost smith so he sees things uh, he was taught differently and then he learned some things from the both bone smiths from his sister from Ren so that you can see them both growing and changing with those revelations that they come across. And then of course Julian trying to fight his own instincts. Uh, at the end, spoiler alert for book one, near the end of the first book, uh, Ren and Leo betray Julian. She does it for his safety. She doesn't want him to uh, be killed because he is an ironsmith and they were they were part of the enemies for uh, when the breach happened. They thought that they were responsible. They got locked on the other side of the wall. So the Ironsmiths were like, yo, like, why are we trapped over here? Anyway, uh, they got, they were in a whole bunch of trouble and Ironsmiths now are technically killed on sight. So Ren didn't want Julian to be imprisoned or killed. So she betrayed him. So good intentions, but the wrong way to go about it. Um, 
So the main conflict in this book is obviously trying to defeat her mother who ha and her father. It's kind of funny because it's both of them that she ends up with dud parents. Her father, she doesn't hate him. She just has mixed feelings. Like, he's been led astray. Like, obviously he raised her and he loves her, but he, he's more concerned about his own power. So he's, he's power hungry. He sees things not in the right light. And of course, her mother's the same way. She just wants the ghost smiths to be brought back and not treated as pariahs. They thought all ghost myths were wiped out in the first place, but there's more of them. They just aren't hiding. Um, I didn't, didn't notice any serious twists thrown in. The twists were in the first book, and they sort of resolved them already, or finished resolving them in this book. So there's no real twists. Um... No real strong emotions, but it was a page turner. I had a hard time putting it down. I really wanted to just devour it, and it's a good adventure story. Uh, you even see growth. Uh, I forgot about Leo. Leo has some growth, too, because he's the second. He's a spare, right? He's the third son of the king, so he's the spare's spare. Like, he has no real value to his family, and he's all about trying to prove himself as uh, worthwhile and important, but not in the sense that he wants to rule in any way. He just wants to prove that he's not useless, that he has skills. So you get to see that in Leo too, which is really great. Um, I, yeah, I really enjoyed the book. I really thought the writing was great. It is in um, third character. And it mixes back and forth. It's mostly from Ren's point of view, but there are some chapters from Julian's point of view, from Leo's point of view, and from Inera's point of view for all the chapters, which is consistent with the way the first book was. Um, am I missing anything? I don't think so. Oh, I should mention um, Julian's uncle, who is the regent for the Iron Iron Smith House of Iron throne. Technically, Julian is supposed to take over, but he was just a kid, so his uncle's covering for him, and he was working with uh, Ren's mother, the Corpse Queen, helping them build the Iron Revenant. Like, obviously, they needed the Iron Smith to build the Iron Suits for them. So, yeah, another power hungry. That's mostly the message here is don't be power hungry. But they resolve uh, all the issues that they needed to do. There's no real afterward in this one. It just ends with their plans for what they're going to do with the world uh, to make it better and the things that they've already done to make it better. And you just, it, the rest is sort of up to your imagination. But everything is wrapped up nicely. There's nothing, no loose ends. Um, and we can all assume that most of it goes smoothly. Because that's what we're supposed to do in books. But yeah, the happily ever after is a pretty good happily ever after. Uh, only the people who were supposed to die, die. And I think that's it. Um, I would definitely give this book a uh, 4 out of 5 stars. The series overall 4 out of 5 stars exceeded my expectations. Great writing, engaging characters, and they were complex and relatable. You can see the growth. I absolutely loved it, uh, but there was some parts that were kind of slow. The pace was even overall. Some dips, uh, obviously faster paced towards the end. Um, maybe reread, but I'm really happy I own them, and I'm glad I really own her other books too. It's a nice, nice set. Um, I hope you guys check it out. If you liked that review, please like and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video.